satisfying thing that I ever have to happen to me is when I can come to the house of the Lord. I can be so tired and wore out and upset, and, but just let me get to the house of the Lord where all the saints are gathered and praying, then I go to feeling better right away. There's something soothing about it. Don't you think so, brother? And something that just soothes and seems to iron out all the wrinkles and you're just satisfied. Results of last service for the first night. Praying that God will continually, Brother Wagner, just to continue give us them kind of services. Now we never know night by night what the Holy Spirit is going to do with us. We just come here without form, without any ritual, just waiting on the Lord and see what He'll guide us to do. And I think that's the way we should do. Come and wait upon the Lord. One of these nights, I want one of these good singers around here to sing that for me. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Oh, I just love that. For that's what I've had to do all my life. So happy I had to do it. I wait every day and every hour just on what he'll do. I have no abilities of my own, no, no, uh, no education to depend on. I just have to depend on him. And hour by hour, I just wait on him, see what he'll tell me to do. Try not to get frustrated when hundreds of calls and sick and dying. If you get all frustrated, then God can't use you. Just sit still. He's big enough to tell you. And so just keep on speaking terms with him and he'll tell you what to do when you get there. It's best just to carry out our commission and let him tell us what to do after we get there. Don't you think so? Very fine. <clears throat> I was so happy to hear that, I hope I have this right, that the churches are all coming together for continued cooperation for Sunday. Having it on Sunday afternoon so it won't interfere with any of the churches and their services. Lord bless you, brethren. That's mighty fine and loyal. I appreciate that. They let the people and gather everyone together. That's what we're here to do is to cooperate together in everything, coordinate all of our gifts and strengths and so forth unto the kingdom of God's sake. That's the only way we'll ever move this great load is pull together. I used to drive horses quite a bit. You get a heavy load and you take one horse and pull and then let loose the other and pull and you just can't get anywhere. Well, let them get quietened down, get their shoulders together, and then start. And one of the best ways to do that, to make a load pull like that, is lead your horses. And that's the best way we need now is stop, quit jerking, jumping, and let the Holy Spirit lead us on. That's just the way. Lead it right on out. And the load will take over, I'm sure. Now, just before we open the word, for we want you to get up early in the morning and attend your Sunday school. And now you visitors here, that's strangers in the city, uh, these men here all represent churches. There'll be one of them close to where you're staying. You attend one of them tomorrow morning and also tomorrow night. Attend some of these churches. You'll be welcome to any of them. And you members here of the church, the different groups, invite these people home with you uh, to attend church. Tell them where your church is located. If I lived in San Jose, I'd belong to one of these churches. It's exactly right. I'd have my children in their Sunday schools because these churches stand for the very same thing that I'm giving my life for. This gospel, the full gospel. And I would certainly have my children taught in schools like that that would teach them the word of God and the way of life. And I'm sure they'll do you good if you'll just attend their services tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, be here. And tomorrow night, go back to one of the churches. They'll all, it'll all be appreciated. And next week, we start right in with our continual revival each night next week. Now, before we open the Word, let's talk to the author. Someone said to me one time, said, Brother Branham said, you sure have bad English. And I said, I know that. 
and said, uh, this is a very smart man. Normally all of you know him. He can preach in seven or eight languages. And so he said to me, he said, uh, you just don't know your Bible. Discussing something with me. And I said, but I know the author real well. <laughs> That's the main thing. Uh, long as I know him, he'll guide me in what's right. I believe that. So let us talk to him now with our heads bowed just for a moment. Great author of life, the writer of the sacred scriptures that's given to us, inspired by the Holy Spirit and can only be interpreted by the Holy Spirit. And I pray that you'll send him tonight, the divine interpreter of this scripture, and place it into our hearts, each one of us, so that we can receive faith for everything we have need of tonight. If there are those here who does not know you as Savior, may the scripture be imparted to their heart tonight by the Holy Spirit that Christ died for their sins according to the scriptures. Grant, if they haven't received the Holy Ghost as yet, may this be the night that when this part of the scripture will be imparted to them, and may they receive the blessed Holy Spirit to work in their lives the will of God. And we would pray, Lord, for those who are sick and needy tonight, the shut-ins, and those who are in the hospital, on beds of death, O oh, great God of heaven, send angels to their bedside and heal their sick bodies, Lord. Speak to them the peace of God. And those who are present, may the scripture be imparted to them tonight by the Holy Spirit that they might know the Scripture says, I'm the Lord that healeth all thy diseases. And may there not be a sinner or a sick person among us when this service is closed tonight. May the saints' hearts be lifted in great praises and joy until there will be a hallelujah all over the, the entire building and out on the grounds when... They are leaving. May they talk like those who came from Emmaus. Did not our hearts burn within us as he spoke to us along the service? Grant it, Lord. Tomorrow, give each of these ministers, Lord. I pray that you'll give them such an anointing tomorrow till every church will have a revival fire in it. May sinners be saved and Believers filled with the Spirit and the sick and afflicted healed in the churches. May there be coming from all over the country tomorrow night testifying of what great things took place in their churches. Grant it, Lord. Give us these victories, Father. Now sanctify every believer. Hide us behind the Word, Lord. May the blood atone for our sins and let the Holy Spirit just come in and take right away in our lives. From the very reading of the word until the close of the service. For we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. We want to read some out of the holy writings tonight in two different places that I have selected to read from. And I want to take the subject right after reading of the word. First, we were going to read from Genesis, the 24th chapter, beginning with the 56th verse and reading down the 60th inclusive. And then we want to begin in Genesis 22 at the 15th verse and read the 18th inclusive. Now in Genesis 24, 56, it reads this. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away, that I may go to my master. And they said, We will call the damsel, 
and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebekah and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. And they sent Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his man. And they blessed Rebekah, and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions. And let thy seed possess the gate of those that hate them. And in Genesis twenty-two fifteen, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and has not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessings I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heavens, and as the sand on the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. If I should call it a subject just for a few moments, i say this, Thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. God had been trying Abraham to see if he would hold fast his promise with a heart that was with the unadulterated faith. You know, there's so many people that can grasp the word just for a minute. It seems real good to them. And then, after a few hours, something comes along contrary to what the seed seemed to tell them, and finally it'll wither. Some can keep it for a few days, but others seem to catch such a hold of it till they'll never let it loose. Jesus spoke of these in his time about where the seed fell on stony grounds and on thorns and thistles and then some in good ground. Now, the last time here I'd taken three afternoons a series on teaching of Abraham, how that God had given him the promise when he was 75 years old and told him that he was to have a child by Sarah, his wife, 65 at that time. And Abraham believed well, what God said was the truth. He didn't consider how old he was or how old Sarah was. The seed must have took a real deep rooting in Abraham's soul. For it taken 25 years for that seed to ever take life. But Abraham would not discard it because he did not see it growing and looked like getting contrary all the time to the promise. But Abraham knew that it was God's word and God would keep his word. Now the time had come when Abraham was right at a hundred years old before the seed was ever begin to take life. And God, in trying Abraham, the way that he did Abraham, he does Abraham's seed. And we must realize that we, the believers, are Abraham's seed. For the Bible said that 
When we are dead in Christ, we are Abraham's seed and heirs with him according to the promise. And we receive Abraham's seed when we receive the Holy Spirit. We receive a faith with this Holy Spirit that was the faith that was delivered to Father Abraham. For when we die in Christ, we take on the promise. Abraham, the great man of faith, we call him, and how that God confirmed all his promises to Abraham and promised that in the last days how he would confirm the same thing that he spoke to Abraham, he would confirm it again with Abraham's seed. Jesus picked it up in the New Testament and spoke back of what Abraham done and spoke forward to this generation. For we realize just before the great destruction of Sodom, Jesus referred to it in his days and said, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Just the same happenings. So shall it be to the seed of Abraham in the last days. Now we know that the city, Sodom, was divided with believers and unbelievers. And the unbelievers were wicked, very immoral as the unbelievers of today is. And the church that was in Sodom was in a lukewarm condition, just as church in the world today is. But there was a group, Abraham's seed, that was called the elect, that had separated themselves from the rest of the world. That was Abraham's seed. And when the time come of visitation before the annihilation of a great fire falling from heaven and burning the entire city up, which was a type of this day that we live where the destruction of the world is to come by fire. Notice just before that took place, there was three messengers came from heaven. And they came first to Abraham, the church elect, and sat down and talked with him. And two of them got up and started on down to Sodom to bring the church formal out. The church denominational, a farm, ritualistic church. But one stayed behind to talk to the church elect, the seed of Abraham. And they that went down and talked to Sodom, to Lot and to his children and to his grandchildren and his son-in-laws and so forth, they preach the gospel of judgment coming. That isn't a perfect type of a modern Billy Graham. I don't know it. And you notice it blinded the eyes of the people. And the preaching of the gospel, if it's not received, blinds the unbeliever. But there was one we want to take notice of tonight, it was the one that stayed behind and talked to Abraham. He said he was a stranger and he'd traveled far. And he said to Abraham, Abraham, where is your wife Sarah? If he was a stranger and not knowing Abraham, 
How did he know that he had a wife and her name was Sarah? Now, Abraham's seed, wake up. How did this angel know, this man, know that Abraham was married and his wife's name was Sarah? Said, where is Sarah thy wife? Abraham sat in the tent, which was behind the angel, or the man that was talking. And he said, seeing that Abraham is the heir of the world, I will not keep this secret from him. But according to the time of life, I'm going to visit you because you kept God's promise. And Sarah is going to bring forth that baby that I promised you 25 years ago. That's how Abraham's seed keeps the promise. They hold on to God's word. 25 years ago, God made the promise to you, Abraham, and you've been faithful to it and you're a hundred years old now. Now I'm going to prove my power to you so that the seed after you will know to take a hold of God's Word and hold on to it. No matter how long it waits, yet it'll answer. Take a hold of God's Word and don't let it go. Then, when Sarah heard this behind the angel sitting in the tent, She laughed within herself. And the angel looking at Abraham with his back to the tent said, Why did Sarah laugh? Don't you see God? That same Holy Spirit was on that one has come into the midst of the church in the last days. Why did Sarah laugh? Sarah was scared and she said, I didn't. He said, oh, yes, you did. For she was afraid. Do you see what Jesus said? There will be signs in these last days. And as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Now, seed of Abraham, wake up. Take a hold. Watch God keep every word, though that's been 2,000 years ago. God's fulfilled His promise, what Jesus said would take place. There's a modern Sodom. There's advances throughout the country. There's the church formal. There's the church spiritual. Watch where those gifts are working and what groups they're working in. God keeps His Word. When the little fellow was born, God gave Abraham a double trial to prove that Abraham's seed is faithful. Told him to offer his son up. You know the story. When he went to kill him, there was a ram Blade into the wilderness behind him and he offered the ram. And it was a ram. It wasn't a vision. Blood run out of it. Blood don't run from a vision. He killed the ram. For the ram spoke of Christ's coming. Then when God seen that he had a man that he could put confidence in, he said, I've swore by myself For a man always takes an oath to someone greater than he, and no one was greater than God. So he swore by himself that the seed of Abraham would possess the gate of the enemy. Oh, my. He swore it. God by himself swore that Abraham's seed would possess the gate of the enemy. Watch how he proved it. 
Rebecca, going to be a part of Isaac, which is part of the seed also by the woman. And when her father and her brothers and her mother and her loved ones, kindred, believing in God, when they, she may, was put to a trial, and when it come to the trial, will you go with this stranger or will you stay with us? Her decision was quickly made, clear cut. That's the way God's people makes it. Fast and quick. I will go, she said. Not knowing where she was going, but by faith she went. For there was something within her begin to move. And she knew that God was in it. And when they set her up on the camel, they blessed her and said, Let thy seed be thousands of millions. Thousands of millions. God told Abraham, like the stars of the heaven are the sand by the seashore. That's bringing in the Gentiles. That's the way the seed of Abraham would be. And they also said, let thy seed possess the gate of its enemy. God promised unto her, through Abraham, that the seed would possess the gate. And it will, as long as there is a remaining seed of Abraham, it'll possess the gate with the promise of God like Abraham did. Amen. It'll do that. When Israel was on its march and come to the land of Moab, there was a gate. And they said, we will not let you pass through. And they brought out their prophet to curse the people. Instead of cursing, he blessed. They tried to show him all the bad things that this people had done. But God showed him the good things about it. For he's seen that smitten rock and that brass serpent going before, making atonement for them. And instead of cursing, he blessed the seed and they possessed the land because they were on their road keeping a promise of Jehovah. Amen. Nothing could stop them. For they were Abraham's seed with a promise that they had possessed the gate of every enemy. And they took it. Daniel, a seed of Abraham, was thrown into a fiery furnace or to a lion's den, pardon me. Daniel was thrown into a lion's den to be killed by the lion. And the angel of the Lord came that night and stopped the lion. No doubt it was that great pillar of fire that followed the children of Israel. An animal scared of a light. And when that big light stood there, the lion laid down and Daniel possessed the gate of his enemy. Closed the mouth of the lion. Because he had God's promise and he was Abraham's seed. The Hebrew children, when they were thrown into a fiery furnace, they possessed the gates of the furnace. And the Son of God came down and took the fire off of them. And they possessed the gates of their enemy. Elijah, when he was also the seed of Abraham, when the whole nation turned against him, the king, the queen, and everyone, yet he stood there on Mount Carmel on the promise of God and possessed the gates, the international gates of that country. He did because he was Abraham's seed with God's promise. When Moses, the seed of Abraham, had went on a commission of God, keeping God's word, went down into Egypt, brought forth the people to take them to the promised land, the devil drawed a gate across him. There he was surrounded by Pharaoh's army, backed into the Red Sea. But God caused the strong wind to start blowing it. And they possessed the gate 
of the enemy because he blowed a dry streak across the, the sea. And they went on towards the promise, walking on dry land because there was a seed of Abraham with a sworn promise. They shall possess the gate of the enemy. When they came out of the wilderness to go into Jordan, when God spoke to the famous Joshua and told Joshua to cross over to make the people ready, it was in the month of April, a month of floods. The whole Jordan valleys were spread across. Looked like it was a poor strategy of God to bring them to that place. To that old muddy Jordan, the worst time in the world, when the river is at the highest, usually God lets you get to the last end of the road, the last mile of the way, then he steps in. If you're a seed of Abraham, believe God and hold his promise for healing, for salvation, for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, whatever it is, whatever the enemy is, God lets you get sometime right to the end of the road. And it looks worse than it ever did. The doctor said there's not a chance. But you're the seed of Abraham with a promise that you shall possess the gate of every enemy. Joshua didn't think how wide Jordan was or how muddy it was. He said, gather yourselves together and sanctify yourself and take the ark of God and go forward. And he possessed the gate of the enemy. Why? Why? Because he was taking a promised people to a promised land by a promise of God and was the children of Abraham. That makes a Baptist feel like shouting. <laughs> Abraham's seed shall possess the gate of the enemy. Yes, he crossed over the Jordan. We got to come to the Jordan too sometime. All these great warriors had to die because they were born in sin, born by sexual desire, shaped in iniquity, come to the world speaking lies, but being the promise, being Abraham's seed, by the promise that God gave Abraham, they subdued kingdoms and wrath righteousness and stopped the mouth of lions and escaped the edge of the sword, moved back the waters and raised the dead. For they were the seed of Abraham. By promise by God himself what he would do for them. Then finally one day come the royal seed. Not born of a man, but conceived in the womb of a virgin by God himself. With no sexual desire, Holy Spirit born. When the Holy Ghost overshadowed a little virgin and conceived in there the true seed of Abraham. The faith that Abraham had in God. God had made a promise of this seed. Born of virgin birth. Then he had power over all the gates of the enemy. When he was on the earth, he had the gates of sickness in his own power. He spoke to the sick and the gates opened up. And they walked out free. He had the, the keys to the gate of leprosy, of cripples, of afflictions, of temptations. They smacked him on the face and done everything but pulling beard from his face and spitting up on him and trying to get him to do something was wrong. He said, I could speak to my father and straightway he'd send me 12 legions of angels. He could do it. But he had the power. Why? He had to taste death. All these other warriors had done victories and so forth. But he had to conquer that one who could not be conquered by these men. And when they killed him on Calvary, he was a soul ascended into hell. And he turned the keys on hell down there and unlocked the place and took over. He possessed the gates of hell. On Easter morning, he possessed the gates of the grave. He has the keys of both death, hell, and the grave and rose triumph. 
And we who are dead in Christ are Abraham's seed. And we are more in conquerors through him who conquered everything for us. No reason for us to have to come overcome anything because it's already conquered the last enemy. Sickness, death, temptation, all things are put under his feet. And we are the seed of Abraham being dead in Christ. We are Abraham's seed. Marching on to victory, to victory, to victory. Holding God's promise out before us and going on. Abraham's seed. With a sworn promise by Jehovah God. That he'll possess the gate of every enemy. Now death has no gate for us. Death doesn't have Brother Branham. No it doesn't. What about that? You think you'll die? I'll never die. I can't die. I'm already dead. My life, I'm buried. And my life is hidden. God through Christ sealed by the Holy Ghost. The devil couldn't get me behind you. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on which the second death has no power. We've overcome because Christ overcome it for us. When he went up Calvary, there was spit hanging in his face. Tears and blood mixed together with mockery spit. That old wet garment of blood over his back beating him across the legs as he climbed the mountain. Death began to buzz around him. Death said, I'm coming to get you. Oh, that sting of death. You watch it in a person's face. I've held him in my arms and seen him quiver and straighten out, then quiver and straighten out and cry and scream for mercy. Nothing like a sting of death. But you know, when the bee of death began to buzz around him, you know, if a bee, an insect that's got a stinger, it ever stings deep enough, it pulls its stinger out. It hasn't got no more stinger after that. And when death anchored its stinger in the virgin born son of God he pulled a stinger out of death it doesn't have any more stinger in it. the only thing it is is a bluff a bee that has no stinger can buzz but he can't sting it's been tried St. Paul said when the bee began to buzz around him he said oh death where is your sting grave where is your victory thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ the true royal seed of Abraham, we possess the gate of every enemy. Amen. What are we afraid about? Possess the gates. We have God's promise. We have His Word. We have His Holy Spirit. The angels are encamped about. Everything's in order. Every wall can be tucked down. It's already tucked down. The Son of God goes before us. His banners are waving. And there's nothing can stand in the way of a saint going to meet a promise of God. Death can't stop it. The grave can't stop it. The devil can't stop it. We are more than conquerors. Sickness is conquered for you, friends. Death is conquered for you, unbeliever. Won't you receive him? Habits has been conquered for you. Temptation's been conquered. You say, I got a temper, I can't get over it. It's conquered. He's already conquered it. The great final seed of Abraham, there's no more conquering to do now. He conquered for us. Now we, by His grace, through His promise, just believe and hold on. That's all we do. It's already finished. Our sickness, our transgressions, He was wounded for our transgressions. Bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace upon him. With his stripes we were healed. The great royal seed of Abraham. His spirit is here tonight. His promises are all true. He fulfills everything that he said. Why is it that some setting will be healed and others will fail? Just because that you try to keep a little bit of the world around you. Turn loose everything. Be simple. And look to God and believe it with all your heart. Hold on to it. And it's got to come to pass. God promised it. There's nothing can keep it. Do you believe that? Let us bow our heads then just a moment.
How many would like to be remembered in this prayer? Raise your hands and say, God, give me the faith. Oh, I'm ashamed of myself as a child of Abraham, the seed. Give me faith, Lord. Take away all doubts. Forgive me my unbelief. Raise your hands and say, God, be merciful to me. God bless you. The Lord bless you. Heavenly Father, the anointing of the Holy Spirit seems to be just smothering me out. Seemingly that he wants to do something great here tonight. Let it happen, Lord. Oh, Lord, let it happen. These people has been told that they are the seed of Abraham and are heirs with Abraham according to the promise. God has sworn that the seed of Abraham shall possess the gate of every enemy. Lord, if there is one here tonight that you've knocked at their heart's door and they haven't received you as yet, let them know that you want to adopt them into the family of Abraham. And they say, well, I drink, I smoke, I gamble, or, or I lie, steal, or something. Let them know that all those things are conquered through Christ Jesus. There's many here, no doubt, Lord, through flusterations and doubts and wearies has failed to receive the Holy Ghost. Let them know that you were tempted in all manner like we are yet without sin. You took our place and conquered the enemy by your righteous life. That we who are unrighteous can still have the victory as we believe on you and claim the promise. Let those who are sick of the faithful doctors has worked through and tried their best to save their life. But they're laying dying. Many of them with afflictions that has not been revealed to man yet what to do for them. Oh, Lord God, they are the seed of Abraham. Let them see tonight by the message that God swore to Abraham that his seed should possess the gate of every enemy. Then being in Christ Jesus, our Lord, makes us the seed of Abraham. Every enemy has to turn loose. The blood of Jesus Christ, may it sanctify this group of people tonight. May all doubts and frustrations and fears be taken away. And may there be a coming forth of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord, God, send your angel tonight. That great angel, the Holy Ghost, that came down in the form of a man just before the destruction of Sodom. When your own precious son said, and As it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. That one who Abraham worshipped and called the Lord God Elohim. Knowing that God was dwelling in that flesh of that man that eat a piece of calf meat and drank milk and eat bread. Oh Lord God, let that Holy Spirit that was in that one that day just surround everyone in here. And give them faith that Abraham had. May He speak to their hearts tonight. May He talk to us and with us that we'll know that the elect church has received it. And God, we pray for the sinful world, all the blindness of the people that's been blinded by the preaching of the gospel. We pray, Lord, that soon You'll call them out quickly before the great destruction comes. We feel that the church tonight is called out. And secured, anchored in Christ. And is ready to go in the rapture. So we pray, Father, that you'll call them out of all different walks of life. And let them know that it's you and giving them the invitation to come. Grant it, Lord, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I love Him, I love Him, because He first loved me, and purchased my side.
Now, seeds of Abraham, the message over. Let's get in a mood of worship now so the Spirit of God can move through us now. Let's sing it with our eyes closed. I love Him. I love Him. Because He Spirit moving freshly like dewdrops from heaven, like the rose of Sharon being anointed. Aaron, when he went into the holiest of holies, he was anointed with the sweet smelling Savior. He walked in with pomegranates beating with between bells, playing holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. Let us enter into the holiest of holies now. Let every seed of Abraham here tonight on this celestial ball, let every one who believes that you've received the Holy Spirit, all you seed of Abraham, walk now anointed with the sweetness of faith. Walk into the holiest of holies, singing holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. If you have need, let it be known to God. Just before we call the prayer line. I love you. Enter in now. I love him. Because he first loved me. And just my salvation on Calvary I don't think about what's wrong with you. Just think about him when we sing it again. Think about, do I love him? Is my, is my love sufficient for him? Have I loved him, put him first? When I wake up at morning, do I, first thing I do, praise Him. All through the day, do I praise Him. In my decisions, do I ask myself, is it your will, Lord? Do I really put Him first in everything? Does He come first? If He does, let's just sing it again and think of it. I love Him first. I love Him. Because he first loved me and purchased my salvation on You feel that sweetness of the Spirit just moving over the audience? I honestly, before God, how many can really feel that the Holy Spirit is close, setting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus? Move, sweet Spirit of God. Call from death unto life. Speak to the seed of Abraham. Give them faith. Let them know that they can possess the gate of every enemy because every enemy has been put under the feet of Christ, even death. And we stand in Him, a conqueror. Every enemy is under your feet as long as you are in Christ because everything is under His feet. How do we get into Him? By one Spirit. We are all baptized into one body been made partakers of the same blessing, the same power, the same faith dwells within our heart that dwelt in Abraham. 
That same faith that was in Abraham holding a promise of God just before the destruction of the world, Sodom world, in Lot's day. That same faith could draw that same angel to this same to this building and do the same things that he did then. You believe it? How many bleeds out there? How many sick people there out in the audience there? Just sick, raise up your hands. Or needy of God for something, raise up your hands. I don't care where you are, just raise up your hands. Too many to call to the platform. If you will believe with all your heart that the angel of God that come to visit Abraham's here, believe on him with all your heart. Did not Jesus, that same angel, that same spirit was in the man that talked to Abraham? Was not he manifested here in a body of flesh to take away sin? A woman touched his garment one day and he said, who touched me? And has not our scriptures told us that he's a high priest right now that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities? Instead of calling a prayer line up here just a bunch with prayer cards, I want the whole building, every one of you out there, that you might know you don't have to have a prayer card up here. I, I say this in the name of the Lord Jesus and in the presence of the angel of God whose servant I am. You ask God for what you have need of right now and claim the promise and see if the great high priest won't speak just as he did when he was here on earth. You believe he can do that? Would it thrill your soul if he would? Would you make you worship him? All you people out there that's sick or afflicted or need of anything, would you would it thrill you to see God do that, to promise it after I preached it tonight? And God made the promise that it would be so just before the coming of the Son of God. It's never been since then. Search the histories. It's never been since then. But it is now. Where did it go to? To the seed of Abraham, those that are filled with the Holy Ghost. Is there any sick people in this section? Raise up your hand over here. Over in this section, raise up your hand. Let's pray. Lord God, let someone have faith. Grant it, Lord, that the people might know that you're the same God. You're the same one who came to Abraham in some sort of a body of flesh. And you spoke to him. And you told him of who he was or spoke his name and told him about Sarah. And asked where she was and done that sign. You promised it would happen again and it has. We're thankful. Let the people in this audience be a witness tonight that at that day there will be no questions then. Grant it, Lord, if the sinner is here, may he also feel the impact of the presence of the Spirit that he might run quickly to the altar and surrender his life or her life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'll be just as reverent as you can in every person praying. Anywhere through the building, back, forward, everywhere you are, just pray. Oh, what a time. You don't know how I feel just now. The gate of this thing belongs to me now. God opens the gates. The gates to your afflictions. The gates to the discernment of your thoughts of your heart. The Bible promised that the Holy Spirit was even a discerner of the thoughts of the mind. That's a gate that was promised. That's a gate that God gives and opens up. Way over in a corner, this way, everyone look this way just a moment. Way over in the corner here is a man and a woman sitting there. They're husband and wife. There's the light hanging over them. The woman's looking at me. She's suffering with something wrong with her leg. 
The man has stomach trouble. Do you believe that God will heal you? Raise up your hand if you'll believe it. All right. Both of you go home and get well. Jesus Christ makes you well. What? Possess the gate of the enemy. There's the victory. If thou canst believe. Pray. How about out of here? There's a little woman sitting there praying. Look this way, sister. She's sitting by the side of a heavy set man. You. Arthritis. Sugar diabetes. You were praying to God to heal you. If that's right, raise up your hand. All right, go home and receive your healing. Believe now. Someone right down here raised up their hand along this line here somewhere. You? You believe with all your heart? You and your husband, your little children. You believe Jesus Christ sent me here for this purpose? You believe Christ can reveal to me what your trouble is? You have stomach trouble. Your husband has something wrong with his eyes. That's right. Lay your hands over on one another. For Jesus Christ heals you both right now. Thus saith the Lord. I challenge you to believe. Do you believe? Let you know that it's the same angel. I'll turn my back. Right straight behind me is a man. He's praying for a mother and father. Heart trouble and arthritis. They come from Arkansas. Their name is Smith. Believe with all your heart back there, Mr. and Miss Smith. Go home and receive your healing and be made well in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you believe it with all your heart, and go and receive it. Now, just keep praying. Somebody in this section. There's a woman sitting in this direction and she's got trouble with her back and with her, her hip. A Mrs. Kirby. Believe with all your heart. Do you? And you can go home and be well. Mrs. Kirby, Jesus Christ makes you well. Do you believe? The same angel of God, seed of Abraham. What's the matter? There's a woman right out from that lady there looking at me. She's praying for somebody. It's her son. He's in a mental hospital and she's praying for him. That's right, lady. You believe Jesus Christ will make him well? If you do, raise up your hand. All right. May it be so as you have believed. Have faith in God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What do you think, honey? That little girl, mommy, with her arms around you there, you believe? You believe Jesus will heal you with that sugar diabetes and let you get well? You do? If you do, stand up on your feet. All right, go home and be well. In the name of Jesus Christ, make it so. <laughs> the little lady sitting there looking at it, rejoicing, facing an operation Monday morning from a female trouble. Do you believe God will make you well? It'll bring you through. If you do, go and believe it. In the name of Jesus Christ. What about you in a wheelchair? Arthritis. If you believe it, you can go home and be well too. In the name of Jesus Christ. There she comes out of the wheelchair. You believe with all your heart, you can have what you have asked for. 
There she goes, crippled out of a wheelchair, walking in the name of the Lord. Let's stand to our feet, everybody, everybody that's sick and afflicted. Rise to your feet now. Give praise to God. Raise up your hands and praise the Lord, everybody, for His goodness. Everybody, for His goodness, come to the Lord. Every sinner, come here in the name of Jesus Christ. Every sinner, walk this away. Come, every sinner, quickly. Move this away and repent of your sins. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, in the face of this angel who makes a cripple to walk, discerns the thoughts of the heart, the angel of God, come forward, sinner, in the fear of God and repent of your sins. That's stern and hard, but it's thus saith the Lord. If you'll come, you shall be saved just as this woman is healed and others are healed. Come forward, sinner. Come right on up this way, people. Everyone seeking the Holy Ghost, come this way. If you want to receive the Holy Ghost, come this way. This is the hour. Sodom is going to burn after a while. Come forward, you that seeking the Holy Ghost and want something from God. Move forward. This is the hour of deliverance. If you want to deliver your soul from temptation, deliver your soul from sin, deliver your soul from fear, deliver your soul from sin, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, whose presence is now here, I charge you by the living God who will judge you at the coming of the Lord Jesus, come forward and receive Jesus Christ. Come, this is your chance. You're challenged by the Holy Spirit. He'll judge you at the day of judgment. Come in the fear of God. Come because God is here. Come because God is calling. Don't come by some pathetic story. Don't come by nothing but because God has bid you to come. Come now. This is it. In the name of Christ, I say it again. Let every sinner, every person that's oppressed, every person that's got sin in their life, unbelief and hasn't received the Holy Ghost, anything that you have need of in the line of spiritual ways, come forward now. If you got a temper you can't overcome, if you're tempted by tobaccos, if you're tempted by sin, come forward and be delivered. In the name of Jesus Christ, look at this poor old woman. I don't know what's wrong with her. I don't know what the Holy Spirit said, but there she sat bound in a wheelchair a few minutes ago. There she is still on her feet giving glory to God. Workers, come with them. Come forward. Oh, seed of Abraham, wake up, pray, get ready. The coming of the Lord is at hand. Come forward, come forward, keep coming. What a moment. What a moment. The Holy Spirit just anointing all around here. I look out over this audience. Something down in me just seems to be lifting me up, 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 up. Something share. The power of God is here. The glory of the saints is here. The power of God is among the people. Seed of Abraham, you have every gate is yours. Every gate is yours. Let's raise our hands everywhere, all you penitent sinners. Raise your hands, everybody. Oh, Lord, creator of heavens and earth, send thy message and thy power upon these people. Let the Holy Ghost take the right away in their hearts just now. Fill them with thy goodness. Fill them with the power of God. Forgive their sins. Heal every sickness in the building. Get glory unto thyself. Grant it, Lord, while the saints worship thee. Grant it, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. While the saints are praising God, let's meet these people here at the altar. Go right around the corner there. Brother Curly, someone there to lead them. Right this way now so we can pray with you right in the room. Right this way. Everybody here now, walk for just this way. Workers, go right with them right now till we go to the room. Right now, the rest of you, anybody here that would like to join with this group, on the Calvary March. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On the Calvary March. Victory in Jesus, Jesus Christ, victory. They shall possess the gate of the enemy. I promise that. God would not call anyone unless it was the seed of Abraham. 
There they go to Calvary. There they go to possess the gates of every enemy. God bless their hearts as they go. My prayer. Come right ahead, sisters. If you're on your road right with them, go right on. Anybody that wants to go right in now that failed to go in the first place, come right ahead. The gate's still open. And there where you can possess the gate of every enemy you've got, the enemy that chokes you down, the enemy that makes you do things you don't want to do, the enemy that puts doubt and fear in your heart, right there's the place to overcome it. It's already overcome. Just go claim it. They're on the road to Calvary. I love him. Ah, let's raise your hands now as we sing. Because Shake our hands like this and close our eyes. I love him. Just look at that, brethren. I all that love him, wave to him. Because he first loved me and first just my. Stop.